Hey and welcome back everybody to Let's Play Age of Empires 3 Asian Dynasties, on to the second mission, Threat in the East. Our victory is short-lived. Allies of Ishida have risen up in the eastern provinces. The enemy hopes to surround my army on all sides, trapping it like a beetle under a jar. What are your orders, Tono? Crush this threat, swiftly and fatally. You cannot breathe when there is a sword at your throat. I would have waited for Ashida to make a mistake. Instead, you walk right into his trap. You should not question the master, Kichiro. Obedience means nothing if it is not absolute. It seems I have much to learn. Do not learn too much, or soon I will call you master. There is not much time. We must hurry and destroy Uesugi's growing army before it becomes a threat. Many villagers did not agree with this uprising and have been imprisoned. If we free them, they will no doubt take up arms with us. Alright, I remember this one being a fairly standard mission. Uesugi has prepared us a murderous welcome. Uh, this one is a pretty standard mission, if memory serves. Uh, this one, the main uh, optional objective that you get in this mission is that there are these prison camps like this one scattered around the map, and you don't need to get all of them, but the more you get, they give you free troops. And I believe sometimes even citizens. This first one will give you this little village, though, to use as a home camp. And I believe the way this one works is after a certain time has elapsed, uh, an enemy army will appear and you have to be strong enough to defeat it. Many thanks, my lord. This village is friendly to you, but I cannot say the same for the others. This whole province is a staging area for war. In a matter of minutes, Uesugi will hurl his army upon us. Okay. First thing I want to do is ship in more villagers. Waste another second. The villages are Uesugi's weakness. He cannot recruit men from villages that are no longer standing. Alright. Just hawking up a few things. Okay. Uh, first of all, we already start with the barracks in this. That's where the Japanese produce all of their main uh, foot troops, all their infantry. You have your archers, which are good against infantry. They tend to fight musketeers. You have your musketeers, which are good against cavalry and melee. And they're all around very powerful. They're kind of your shock troop. Use them just like you'd use a normal musketeer. And your samurai, which are good against cavalry and buildings. Although, even if they're fighting someone like musketeers that they don't exactly excel against, if they manage to get to melee combat, they are very effective because they do a cone of damage rather than just hitting a single unit. So we are actually going to get a few units early on. And I'd like to ally with the Dutch immediately, because I want to get a bank. Okay. Now, we're actually going to take three of you to put on wood. You are going to make a shrine, because we're basically at our pop cap. And I want to get more upgrades going. And it's time for us to start exploring. Now, we can free these villages, and they'll team up with us. In fact, I want to make more gates. That should be good. And I will actually have my troops go right here. Did I not hotkey? There we go. Um, you can collect treasure along the way. I guess this one's a lot of coin for, for how easy it is. Normally I don't bother with them in campaign maps, but... They're useful, I guess. Uh, we need to continue producing troops, actually. And 
And here we go, trade posts. Uh, trade posts work the exact same way as they do in the other versions of the game. You are my leader. Trade post is P, right? For, God, that's inconvenient. Uh, but yeah, you get resources or experience of your choice whenever the carriage goes along the trade route. So that'll help you get shipments a lot faster. It's incredibly useful. I highly recommend it. Let's start getting gold for my military. Trading post is built. Okay, I do highly recommend you actually scout along trade posts in every map, both campaign and not. Uh, entirely just to figure out where all the trading posts are. The army enemy army arrives in... Uh, yeah, enemy army arrives in, uh, eight minutes. Nine minutes, actually. Just under. So we're gonna keep scouting along here, and we're gonna reach this village. Here we go. So these guys, by default, are enemies. Green are hostile to us right now. I'd actually like to upgrade the strength of my musketeers, because my musketeers are probably my best troop. And don't bother with destroying everything else, just destroy any troops that are attacking you, and destroy the stockade. So we're actually going to go back to town here and see how things are going. We have some troops there, that's fine. I could have them go straight up to... Thank you. Many of us were imprisoned for refusing to participate in this foolish uprising. Okay. Uh, it looks like this isn't one of the ones where the people will team up with you, so we're gonna send the villagers we got back to the home camp. Anyone else? Because some of these people were soldiers. We're going to take into our army and we're gonna demolish this base. Uh, some bases will join you, some won't. So, if it won't, burn it down, because you don't want the enemy army having the extra resources. As for back home... Keep forgetting I put this on Huntkey 4. I usually put a stable on there. Uh, as you can see, our resources are doing really well. In fact, I haven't been... Uh, quite up to date on getting all the units out. One village has fallen to us, but there are others. We must so, hurry to put down this rebellion. I would actually like to get a stable soon. So we're gonna put you on wood after. In fact, we're gonna put a few people on wood. I believe the team will be basically inactive after you take out the, uh, the city center. Just for the sake of this campaign. In fact, you people are gonna go on that and go to gold. Uh, not enough wood for that. You'll have enough in a second, though. There you go. I want them getting us gold. And we can actually go along here, as tipped off by the shallow water here. Uesugi has captured our dojo and disgraced us. Raise the barracks to help restore our honor. Where would that be? Oh, right here? That barracks? Okay. So these ones might join us then. Oops. Sometimes when I mean when I mean to hit uh, V to send out a villager, I hit B, which sends sounds the alarm. Yeah, I recommend you don't engage in a fight right here. Just take a few hits and keep marching. Uh, the reasoning for that is you don't want to fight next to a castle. The castle is just going to keep shooting you, and you're going to end up taking a lot more damage. Fight here, where they don't have a castle to support them. And once again, the more villages you take out at these key points. Oh, it's that dojo you want me to destroy. Whatever. I'll destroy this one, too. Um, the more city of these town centers you take out before the army arrives, the weaker the army is going to be. And I actually want... We don't have much room for shrines in this stage. Is kind of the frustrating bit. You almost got the thing down. You know what? Kill that guy. And keep burning that down, I guess. So we're actually good there. And I'd like it if you kept, if you kept producing. In fact, I want experience. So we're switching the shrines to constantly generating experience rather than food. Because we are fine for food. 
you guys just ran out of wood? Well, we have plenty of woods over here. So, go cut that. In fact, I need more people on wood. So, I will have them focus on that for now. As soon as they've destroyed that, there we go. Get marching. And they'll have to walk by the castle again, but no big deal. And an enemy army has reached level 6 home city. Not a problem. And just keep making musketeers, because I believe when the enemy army arrives, they arrive from right up around here, and they march straight down to our base. So that's why I have most of the reinforcements just staying back at the base. I do highly recommend in the options you turn on having this little bar here. It's a good way to keep track quickly of if you're still producing villagers. Which, of course, you always want to be producing. Which means you need a lot of shrines. Why do I... Oh, right. You were from a shipment. You can get making some shrines. Yeah, burn down the barracks. And you guys are actually going to just A move up there, which is attack and move command. And that will scout out all the way there, and they'll fight anyone they find on the way, because I want to see if that's a safe path to go down. Stay here. Yay! Kill these guys. And the enemy army arrives in about three minutes, so we need to get moving. We are yours, General. With your support, we will win back this province for the people. Ooh. Okay, what did we get here? We got some special units. I saw some mercenaries in there. Uh, the Hatamoto Samurai. These are mercenary samurai units that are much more powerful than your average samurai. Uh, looks like it's a pretty straight path here. Do I want to engage with this castle? Not really. No, I'm gonna walk past it. And I'd like to keep producing units, however... Unit cap. Really, just build as many as you can. And I'm actually gonna put these on a different hotkey for now. Have these guys fight. Unfortunately... Oh no, musketeers are pretty good against these guys, right? The archers are better against, um... I believe the archers are better against samurai. Is my army almost here? Yes, they're almost here. Good. Which means I will actually combine these two into one big army. And you need to keep producing. Also, we can finally get a bank. Not that we need the gold, actually. I'd rather have cannons. Let's burn this down first, get the stockade taken care of. And you guys can join the army. You guys can go right back to the base, and we can keep producing. Now that we have this Dutch cannon here, horse artillery, they move very fast, we'll have that at the base. Alright, we've wiped out all of the enemy key locations. Which means we need to make it back to our base now to get ready to engage with the army. And no point in upgrading that. So all we need to do now is prepare for engagement with the enemy army. So you guys can go ahead and start cutting wood. What else do we have? Uh, you guys are doing nothing. Because you ran out of gold. So there are 15 of you. How many people are on that? You can get six of you on that. And then you guys can make another rice paddy field. There we go. Uh, is the army almost back? Almost. You guys can actually go ahead and build a wonder soon. Oh right, you guys were, uh, you guys were on food, weren't you? That was not a gold mine there, that was food. Okay, well... They can do that, then. And the enemy army has arrived? Alright. Uh, I actually... <sighs> With horse artillery, is pretty fast. Today is a good day to die. 
Attack. Uh, I'd like to get all of these villagers. There we go, and you will be a separate force. Oops. There we go. And they will get moving. However, the horse artillery should be mobile right now. Okay. Are they just going to march straight down? Yeah, that's actually a very small force, as you can see. Uh, it can be a lot bigger if you didn't take the initiative. However, I took the initiative. So, no real point in investing too much in the Dutch right now. Alright, if you're sure you want to engage head-on, then I'll be prepared for it with cannons. Uh, the European teams have by far the most artillery in the game. Uh, and the and the best straight-up-for-power artillery. What's that there? Oh, I didn't even realize he died. Whatever. Um, they have the best artillery in the game. For, like, just straight-up power. Although China does have some very good artillery. In fact, India's, uh, India has one of the most overpowered units in the game, if you ask me. Uh, which is their siege elephants with the cannons are insanely powerful, and you'll be seeing that later in this Let's Play. However, um, being able to ship in European cannons really is a severe advantage for us. Uh, a church would also be nice, entirely because European-only upgrades and stuff from it. All right, let's just watch the engagement, because I know that we can do this just fine. Uh, normally, I would recommend that you intentionally, um, if you want to really up your level of play, start sending units that are specifically good against certain units at them in a battle. Don't just A-move like this. But for the sake of this, let's play. The uprising has been crushed. Come, it is time to count the dead. We still have bloodier battles ahead of us. There are times when it's worth it, and there are times where it isn't worth it unless you've gotten quite good. I'd say that the time it is that it's worth it most is when you have certain artillery on the battlefield that are only specifically good against a certain thing, like only good against inf infantry. You want to make sure they're focused on the infantry. And the ones that you're going to want to micro around the most, micro around meaning um, control manually the most, is usually your cavalry, because usually you're going to have less cavalry because they tend to be more expensive, and because they're fast, you can maneuver them around the battlefield more, they tend to have hand attacks too. Hand attack cavalry, you're really going to want to specifically tell them, like, hey, go around the flank and hit their artillery, or something like that, because in a head-on engagement, you might lose because their artillery might overpower you, but if you tell your hussars or cossacks to ride around their flank and attack their artillery, you might end up wiping out their artillery and then outmuscling the rest of their army. And plus, if you have your cavalry already around their flank, then if the enemy army decides to retreat, you might end up picking off a few units during their retreat so that they have to spend more resources on getting their army back to full strength. So, just something to keep in mind. We earned five cards that time, uh, you earn cards very fast in this campaign, because you only have five fights with each civilization. So, they level you up very, very quickly. Um, nice ones to get are always transforms into a shrine to support population and generate resources. However, it's, it's two shrine wiggins and you can send it twice. So that is a lot of free wood you're getting worth. And you can get two of this card, actually, and really start mass shipping it. Although this will be an age two and this will be an age one. Not <clears throat> not really a big deal, because um, you get to age two, so you, ge you generally get to age two very quickly in this game. And in fact, in most campaign missions, you start in age two, because teams don't really get military in age one. Um, I would recommend uh, Bloody Harvest, though. That is another upgrade for your riders, and it's very, very good. Uh, these infinite sending rider cards are incredibly good. And the fact that you start with one is insane to me. But I would recommend you get this one as well. 
It can be age 3, whereas this is age 4. Although it's a little bit less, having one an age early really does come in handy. Uh, artillery upgrades are nice. I'm not going to do a whole lot of them right now. The archers are nothing to shake a stick at. They are good, but again, I'm not going to be working on them much. Uh, you can get a line of upgrades here of your dynamos. These are kind of your battlefield generals, and they are very good. There are other ones to uh, consider, especially because they can often they act as a mobile barracks. They can train on the battlefield, although they do not fight or move while they're training units. You can get dojos, which I believe train special units, but I could be wrong. Yeah, construct a powerful dojo is this one. I believe that one has special units. Uh, castle limit is increased. This is always a very standard one. It says outpost, war hut, and blockhouse, um, and castle. That For Japanese, that just means castle. You only have castles. So the castles are tougher, and you can have more of them. It's nice, but it wouldn't come into play in the campaign. Ten center increased, you can call it regulars and sentries again. That's kind of, uh, it's to prevent getting rushed. Again, um, it, it's a card that you might use online. You would never need it in the campaign. Uh, Vildur, oh yeah, changes from food to a lesser amount of wood for the Zen diet. That one definitely has its strengths, because you use less wood for your army, and uh, that means you've got more food for your army, because Japan uses a lot of food in their army, so you can produce a lot more troops. The problem is you're using up wood that you could be using on shrines, so you're getting, su uh, you're getting supply blocked more often. You can work around that, but I'm not going to bother with that. Personally, I like a lot of farming upgrades. These increase the work rate of your rice patties. I find those to be very good. Uh, you get no hunting upgrades as Japan, of course, because they do not hunt animals. In fact, if you build shrines around wild animals, the shrines will get you more of whatever resource you're trying to get. So I'm actually going to focus very heavily on fortress upgrades. In fact, I'm going to start going down the line of flaming arrows, because I find those to be very good siege units. And if we go to build our deck, you'll see that we do have a few cards that aren't in the deck, because we've run out of space. So I'm actually going to get rid of a few cards that I'm never going to use. Um, first one would be, yeah, I'm not going to be making another town that way. Uh, in normally in in the in skirmish matches, I would love to make another town center as soon as I can because that means I have more places to produce villagers from, and thus I'm producing it much much faster. And that's why I played Portugal for a long time. However. Um, Although it does really kickstart your economy, you get it. You get that shipment very late. I would rather have something more practical like that. Um, as for everything else, I do actually want H4, H3. I would actually like the two flaming arrow card, in which I will get rid of the ninja, because I do not want to be spending that much money just to ship a ninja. Ninja are good. I don't want to be spending that much on it, so I would rather take the Flaming Arrow. So that's it for this episode. On the next episode, we do Dead Man's Pace, which I... If memory serves and if it's the mission I'm thinking of, it is actually a very lengthy stage, and probably the most difficult one for Japan. Japan has a fairly easy campaign. Until next time, have a nice day.